morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is uh, Wendy Mercy. I'm the Associate Dean and Director of Research here at Virginia State University. Uh, I say welcome to Virginia State University Randall Farm, where we are going to conduct Industrial Health Field Day here today. The first of its kind in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And glad uh, you are here, and uh, I hope you are, will have an enjoyable day. First, before I go to the program, just housekeeping. I just need to alert you that we have the doors, two doors over here, and another door over there, and the bathrooms are across the hall. And as you see, the agenda is packed, and we don't have official break. But feel free to get up and stretch your leg. Uh, water over here, coffee over there, whenever you need. And <clears throat> if you have any questions or need any help while you are here this morning, uh, please see Miss Laverne Morris, uh, my administrative assistant. She will be outside there and uh, she will try to help you in any way she can. <clears throat> As you know, the purpose of uh, the field day is to share information on the challenge of growing industrial hemp, the available and potential uh, markets uh, for industrial hemp products, and have some discussion on the feasibility of establishing industrial hemp processing facilities for seed or fiber in Virginia or in neighboring uh, states. I believe we have invited uh, individuals who can shed light on the policy as well as the technical challenges that face the hemp industry when this plant becomes legal to grow in Virginia. Now, uh, with that short remark, I'm going to move to the program and I will ask Dr. Jude Bruno, Executive Director of Center for Agricultural Research, Engagement and Outreach to come up here and introduce uh, Dr. Makula, Makula Abdullah, the 14th president of Virginia State University. Good morning. Good morning. I echo Dr. Mercy in welcoming you to Virginia State University. Uh, our Virginia State University and our College of Agriculture, we're very proud to do some unique agricultural work across the state of Virginia. Uh, we do a lot of work in providing market opportunities, especially for small farmers, and that's part of why we're gathered here today. We are very excited in talking about a potential new market opportunity here for agricultural production in the state of Virginia, industrial hemp. And this has been a conversation that's been on the table, but I'm, I'm happy it has expanded to all of the individuals who are in the room today, and we're gonna see where we can go with this. My job is to introduce our 14th president, President Makola Abdullah. What I want to say about President Abdullah, and he has a wonderful biography, I really want to point out that he is one of the most innovative leaders that we've had at Virginia State University. He is changing the trajectory of where we're going with Virginia State, and he has also changed what we're doing as a land-grant institution. He's very passionate and committed about our work as a land-grant institution, and he is a strong supporter of Virginia agriculture and the research and extension work that we do here. I might add, he was voted the HBCU Male President of the Year for 2017, so please let's give our President Abdul a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm not sure I can match the introduction. Uh, <laughs> But I'm very excited to be here in front of you. First, uh, I'd love to, of course, give some uh, uh, acknowledgments to some of the dignitaries who are here uh, today. Uh, Dr. Basil Gooden, the Secretary of Education. Uh, of course, uh, our Senator Rosalind Dance, who is a VSU alum and always on campus, but it's always great to see you. Always great to see you on campus. And two of our delegates who are here, Delegate Glenn Davis and Delegate Thomas Wright. 
But of course, I want to acknowledge the, the most important uh, group in the room. Are there any people here who this is their first time to Virginia State University? Well, all right. Well, in that case, <laughs> welcome to Virginia State University. Uh, on behalf of the Board of Visitors, um, I have been authorized to make you honorary Trojans for the day. So congratulations. <laughs> You're not all registered in school. You have to go to class in a little while. Um, we're very excited to be a part of this conversation. Industrial hemp. Uh, is an exciting research uh, prospect. Uh, the idea that we can be a part of developing new markets here in Virginia is something that we're very excited about. Uh, working with our partners uh, from Virginia Tech and James Madison, uh, whatever we can do uh, to reach out to, to all of the farmers uh, to find better opportunities for, for everyone to make money to provide a better life for themselves and their family is what we want to be a part of. And so again, I thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for being a part of this conversation that I look forward to hearing more about it. Later. Thank you. Thank you, President Abdullah, for uh, everything you do for our program. And I would like to highlight uh, one record he has with us, that since joining the SU, he has not missed a single field day conduct in Iraq. <laughs> Thank you for that, Mr. President. Now I ask Dr. Ray McKinney, Dean of the College of Agriculture, to come up here and introduce Dr. Bali Gooden, Virginia Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And I, too, would like to welcome you to Virginia State University, the Randolph Farm and to this field day, uh, your field day. It's your field day because this was planned with you in mind. Today is the opportunity for us to learn all about industrial hemp and for you to get some answers to some of the questions that you might have regarding this. So now on to the test. I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Dr. Basil I. Gooden, who serves as the third secretary of Agriculture and Forestry for the Commonwealth. In this capacity, he supports the governor's mission of building new Virginia economy in agriculture and forestry, two of Virginia's largest private industries. Now, prior to his appointment as secretary, Dr. Gooden served as state director for USDA Rural Development. I knew one of his colleagues in North Carolina, Randy, and uh, so on. I'm very familiar with the work that he was doing, where he worked to improve the economy and quality of life for rural Virginians. Previously, he served as deputy, chief deputy director of the Virginia Department of Housing Community Development for 12 years. Uh, Dr. Gooden is a native of Buckingham County, where he and his family own and operate a cattle farm raising uh, Angus uh, beef and participate in tree farming and land conservation. You'll have to take me down to visit the cows one day. Uh, the secretary is a graduate of Virginia Tech, Syracuse University, and the University of North Carolina. He resides in Henrico County with his wife, Dr. Susan T. Gooden, who is a professor of public policy at the Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs at Virginia Commonwealth University. They have one daughter, Kaper, who is a graduate of the College of William and Mary. With no further ado, Dr. Bowser Good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dean McKinney. It's always uh, great to be here. It's always uh, great to collaborate with Virginia State University School of Agriculture. Uh, they are doing some tremendous things here. Mr. President, Always a pleasure to be here um, again at Virginia State. I feel right at home. Both my parents actually uh, graduated from Virginia State uh, University. Actually, they met here at Virginia State University, so I feel Virginia State University is responsible for my existence. <laughs> uh, for that. And actually, uh, I want to recognize, actually, I have a cousin uh, from Buckingham County uh, that we grew up together here, Adrian Jones. His grandmother, which is my aunt, 
graduated from Virginia State, and we have the diploma on the wall. She graduated from Virginia State University in 1921. And so we have the diploma there, and so uh, Virginia State uh, has certainly deep roots in, in my family. Certainly, uh, I want to recognize Senators uh, Ralph, Senator Dance, uh, Delegates Davis, and uh, certainly Delegate uh, Tommy Wright uh, for being here. These are outstanding supporters of agriculture here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. You have great representation uh, in, in Richmond on issues that are very relevant to rural Southside and rural Central Virginia when we talk about agriculture. And so we can always rely on the representation that, that's represented here today um, to really support what we're trying to do uh, in uh, agriculture and in our office as the Secretary of Agriculture. I'm just honored and delighted to be here, and I'll be very brief, but uh, this is a very important issue, certainly for our Secretariat, certainly a, an important issue uh, for Governor Terry McCullough. We've had many conversations around industrial hemp and the economic viability of industrial hemp. We've had these conversations going back to when I actually uh, took this seat, uh, actually last September, uh, talking about industrial hemp. And then uh, from that, we engaged certainly the great people at VDAX. We have representation from VDAX. I see uh, certainly Charles Green and, and uh, Aaron. We've been meeting about how to move legislation forward. You'll see legislation, but also looking at our policies that we have at VDAX, uh, how we can make industrial hemp uh, a, a product that actually is grown across the Commonwealth and uh, look at its uh, viability uh, as an economic driving force here in the Commonwealth. We are very, very supportive of that. I mean, we want to be clear that we are looking for every avenue, every economic tool that we can, um, you know, no stone will be left unturned when we're talking about economic development in rural Virginia. And industrial hemp, we feel, can be an economic tool to really help revitalize some of rural Virginia. Well, I do see uh, the, the Commissioner Sandy Adams. Uh, Sandy Adams, as many of you know, outstanding um, public servant and outstanding leader uh, of VDAC. So thank you, Commissioner Adams, for being here this morning. And what we want to do is just talk about we're here to serve, whether it's VDAC, whether it's the Secretary of Agriculture, and I saw actually some of my team here as well. Uh, my assistant secretary, Lindsey Reams, is here. Oh, Lindsey Reams right here. Um, thank you so much for being here. And also, when we talk about collaboration and being here to serve and to move this, this issue forward, um, we want to thank Virginia State University because they actually house one of, uh, one of my staff members, someone who works with us, uh, Ronald Howell, who uh, many of you know uh, and you've seen, who's actually a farmer. But Virginia State University hit uh, Ronald's office is right here on campus uh, because we want to interface with the farmers, the agriculturalists. We want to understand uh, some of the science, some of the new technologies, the new science, science that's going on, whether it's around industrial hemp or any issue around agriculture. So we want to thank Dr. McClinney, we want to thank the president for allowing uh, Ronald to be here and the collaboration we have. Ronald not only is here, at Virginia State and works for us, but Ronald actually uh, works for USDA in Washington, D.C. as well. So what we really feel is that the more that we can leverage our resources, whether it's colleges, universities, the state and the federal government, the larger the impact that we can have on the agricultural issues that impact you as rural farmers and people in, in, in interested in agriculture. I want to thank many of the people here that are part of the Industrial Hemp Coalition, uh, I see uh, Graham Ritfin uh, here. Um, I don't know, Jason, oh, Jason, I'm a TJ. Jason, and, and actually a, a, a significant grower, uh, certainly Mr. Rhodes, for being here. Thank you so much uh, for, for being here. Um, so, again, really what I want, the message I just want to leave you with is we're here to support you, we're here to promote what you do. Um, and, and finally, to let you know that I feel I have the greatest job on the planet because I get to go around the state, around the country, and around the world promoting what you do here in the Commonwealth of Virginia through agriculture. 
I get to sing that message around the world. And as a country boy from Buckingham County, Virginia, as a beef cattle farmer, I love it every day. You make my job so easy. And so I'm here to support you. My team's here to support you. Anything that we can do to move industrial hemp forward, please don't hesitate to, to send us a text message to give us a call mm -hmm. on my card. There's my cell phone number. You can shoot me a text message because we're in this thing together to move this thing forward. Uh, that's what my team's here to do, to serve each and every one of you. So again, thank you for your interest. Thank you for your innovation. And we look forward to moving this forward together. Thank you so very much. representing the 16th Senatorial District for which Virginia State University is a part of, a healthy part of, I welcome you to the 16th Senatorial District, which is where I was born in Chesterfield County. How do you like that? I want to tell you that I am happy to be here with my colleagues and I'm uh, happy that we have that president just left because he's very, very busy, Dr. Abdullah, but it's been a joy working with him. Dr. Mercy, who is the quiet person that is so like serving as the um, host for us for the day. They've done an awesome job as far as keeping their commitment to make sure that uh, the bill that was passed that allowed us to explore the hemp industry in Virginia is moving in the right direction. I am so pleased that um, Secretary Gooden has already expressed his support behind the research of the project that you're going to see today, the results of it, and he said he's behind us 100%, and we will hold him accountable. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it is always a pleasure to stand and sit with my colleagues who are here from the General Assembly, my partner in the Senate, Senator Frank Ruff, my former partners in the House, <laughs> Delegates uh, Glenn Davis and Tommy Wright. Love them. I spend more time in the House than I have in the Senate. But uh, I'm happy to be in the Senate, Frank. I really love being in the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll tell you that I am probably the, the least likely person that can say to you that I was one of the two people that got this hemp industry movement going in Virginia. How do you like that? Can you believe that? <laughs> I might have been a little reluctant when I was asked if I would consider carrying a bill on industrial hemp because for me that was marijuana, y'all. And it's like, <laughs> that is just not something that I thought I might want to do, but I have three counties. The 16th Senatorial District are three cities and three counties. Now if it was recreational, maybe the cities might have been happy, but this was industrial hemp, and so I had become a quick learner, and they did not leave my office until they convinced me this was a wonderful thing, but it was propped up with the fact that it would be bipartisan because my friend in the house, Doug Yost, was going to be carrying the identical bill. He's a good guy. And so 
with our two bills together, we were in lockstep all the way. Whatever changes was made in the House was definitely going to be made in the Senate. So he was my partner, and it wasn't in crime, it was in a good thing. Because the two of us working together with so, so many people, because everybody, you know, a bill is not our bill, we start it, but it becomes everybody's input. Because at the end of the day, you want something that people can live with. And I say, you start with a dog and a cat, and you might end up with a goldfish. But it's a goldfish that we can all digest and say it's an okay thing. So, but most importantly, a bill, once it becomes a law, is whether or not it's going to be implemented. And we had two land-grant universities, Virginia State University and Virginia Tech. And of course, I didn't mention this, I haven't mentioned before, I'm wearing all this orange and blue for a reason, because this is my alma mater. I am a graduate of Virginia State University. So I knew that we could rise to the occasion. And today I'm going to be, like everybody else, excitedly waiting to see what's happened, because it's been a little over two years, but it's shown that it was just not a bill that was passed in the law and set on a shelf somewhere. It is one that we hope is going to be one that uh, ignites the economic development just a little bit more in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and is one that is very inclusive, that it deals with our rural areas that might not have the means that they're going to have, because they said this brings millions of dollars to the economy, so we're excited about that, and I hope you are too. I'm just glad to be here and witness the fact that bills that we fight on that become law are just the starting point. It's the implementation and where they go, and I'm excited to take this journey with them. Thank you. some joke about him. That, that, we've been friends for a long time. I used to kid him about his baseball throwing because of white. And uh, that got old. So now I, I just say that he, in the history of Virginia, he is one of the top three secretaries of agriculture as far as we know. Actually, we've only had three, but that's, uh, that's beside the point. <laughs> Follow the birds. Last year, I went to the Blackstone Research Field where they were trying four different categories of hemp. They were learning things that they didn't know. But the birds did know. The golden finch loved the seeds. When we came up, this mass of birds flew away. Hemp is a native grass of Virginia. It lights our soil and we should like it. There are three components in this. The issue of research, which I think that there, our universities are doing a good job on. There is the issue of growing which I think from the crowd here, there is an interest in growing it. But the third is the issue of how we're going to deal with it once we grow it. And we cannot leave this planning to chance. If we get a lot of folks who are interested in planting hemp and there is no place to market it, we will have the same problem we had in Mecklenburg and Halifax County a generation ago when somebody came up with the idea of growing broccoli. We were great at growing broccoli, but we didn't sell it very well. So a lot brought it in a warehouse. So we need to make sure that we have a, a, a system to get it from the farm to a distribution point, very much like we've done with the tobacco uh, warehouses in the state and and right now we know that North Carolina is considering that issue and we have to stay with them or leapfrog ahead of them so that we are the center not they. Uh, 
uh, on, a on, a, on a regional level, I guess I could say, uh, the, the, the stumbling blocks are the, the Washington and Congressman Goodlatte has been working is with uh, Senator from McConnell to try to ease the federal stuff and, and stop classifying him in the same category as marijuana. Once that's over, I think we'll be ready to roll. But I'm counting on the Secretary to have us plan. <laughs> Thank you all for coming today. Tommy Wright. I represent the 61st district in the uh, House of Delegates. It includes the candidates of Amelia, Nottoway, Cumberland, Lunenburg, and Mecklenburg. And my area will be a wonderful place for him. We'd, we'd love to have a processing facility there. But we've got the infrastructure, the farming inf infrastructure already in place. Uh, the loss of tobacco, uh, really has created a lot of uh, open land, although we still grow a lot of tobacco in, in our area. Uh, but I think it's something that uh, it needs to be uh, uh, researched. I appreciate the job that Virginia State is doing in that. We have to figure a way, as Frank said, to have a place to have it processed after it's done. But I also want to thank very much uh, Secretary Gooden for being here today and lending his support. And I appreciate the hospitality. Uh, uh, Dr. Brunoff, and I was uh, pleased to see Dr. Abdullah again, too. I'm uh, also happy to be with my colleagues in the General Assembly, showing uh, their support of, uh, of industrial hemp in Virginia. And I look forward to the day when we can put the seed in the ground and draw the, the finches as Frank is talking about and then sell the crop. Thank you very much. I'm Glenn Davis. I'm, uh, I represent Virginia Beach, and you may be asking, you know, why is the tourism city boy here? Um, and uh, but my uh, my grandparents actually uh, they both grew up on a farm. I would say that I've got the farming gene, except every time I grow regular tomatoes, they pop up as cherry tomatoes. So somehow I miss that. Um, but I got excited about the bill that Roslyn put through with my seatmate Joseph Yost. It's amazing the opportunity. I would say of this new industry, but there's nothing new about it. It's one of the oldest textiles that we have, uh, dating back well before our forefathers. So it's amazing to see the opportunity, and it was in 2014 when, uh, not far from where I live, a gentleman built a house out of hemp. Uh, as many of you know, it's a great insulator. And unfortunately, he had to import all the hemp for that. And to see what we can do today with the technology, everything from plastics to construction, uh, obviously to fiber, and now to even biodiesel fuel. So for us to be the leading state on this, you know, we always talk about it's, it's about the economy. And when you look at different parts of the state, this is something that you don't get a chance to be at the cutting edge of something, especially in agriculture. I mean, we've all had corn, we all have lettuce, we all have cabbage and, 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 and uh, collard greens. I mean, there's no, nothing new, but, but hemp really is. And the use of it, I think we're barely beginning to understand. So I think through what Roslyn started with Joseph Yost and so many of my colleagues and what you're doing today, hopefully puts Virginia on the forefront and not only can we continue with the bill that was passed to allow limited growth and use, but hopefully to allow that expansion and take that $600 million of retail hemp sales in 2016 and grow it and take that $70 million of imports and make it actually originate here in the United States and specifically here in Virginia. So thank you for having me today and thank you so much for what you're doing, Mr. Secretary. Thank you very much for being here and making the remarks. Uh, now I would like to acknowledge some uh, individuals who are among us. Uh, I will start with Ms. Sandy Adams, Commissioner of uh, Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Uh, thank you very much for coming. And <laughs> Mr. Charles Green, the Deputy Commissioner and all the other uh, VDAC employees who are among us. And uh, 
From our side, I saw Dr. David Haile earlier, uh, Interim Dean College of Engineering and Technology. Uh, we work with him on industrial and some of the students are involved uh, in the processing aspect. I would like to uh, acknowledge all the administrators, faculty, and students from Virginia State University. Uh, and thank you for being here. Just the uh, planning of this field day started months ago, and uh, several people worked hard to make it a reality. Uh, at this time, I would like to recognize the Industrial Hemp Field Day Organizing Committee members. Uh, please see, uh, see their names at the back of the agenda. Uh, as you see, the committee members, the individuals come from the community as well as uh, from Virginia State University. So this is a, a, an effort between VSU and uh, members of uh, the community. And I ask the committee uh, members to raise their hands or stand up to be recognized. No? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. It was great working with you. I would also like to acknowledge the sponsors who contributed money and supplies for this uh, field day, uh, Farm Credit, Go Unman, a division of Benchmark Tool and Supply Incorporated, Old Dominion Hemp. Um, by the way, they have some displays out there and uh, we'll be able to look at uh, later on before, after or before the tour. And at this point, I would also like to draw your attention to a form uh, here, evaluation form. Uh, uh, please, before you leave, complete it and give us back because it will help us to plan in the future. Uh, now I move to the presentations. Uh, I will not read the bios of the speakers to, to save time, but I urge you to read the, the, the sheet which is included in the folder. Uh, which summarizes their work on industrial hemp. Each uh, speaker will have about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and I think we have enough time today for presentation and five minutes for questions and answers. If you don't get the opportunity to ask questions immediately after the speaker's presentation, don't worry, uh, you'll get the opportunity during the panel discussion time. All the speakers will come back to the stage to answer questions and participate in, in the panel discussion. Uh, the speakers will be joined by others uh, who have worked on industrial hemp. Uh, we'll also put their presentation on our website, so you don't need uh, to take notes while they are uh, making their presentation. 